In this recording, we'll be showing you iMachining 3D for NX. If we take a look at this automotive part that we have on the screen, you'll see that what we like to do is machine out all the material around it. Now, if we take a look at our workpiece for a moment, you'll see that our part is the part as shown over here, and our blank, or our stock, is actually a box, bounding box around the part. And we'd like to remove all of this material using iMachining 3D. So to start, we'll right click on workpiece or go to create operation and we'll choose iMachining from our drop down list. When we have iMachining, we have the two possibilities of iMachining 3D or iMachining 2D. In this particular case, let's use iMachining 3D and our geometry will be our workpiece. And then we'll click on OK. Now let's take a look at our tool. In this particular case, I have a list of several tools. I'm going to use the first one over here. And if we look at the display, we'll see that it's a 10 millimeter end mill that has a cutting flute length of 20 millimeters with three flutes. You'll also note that we have it in a holder where it is outside of the holder where the length is a total of 30 millimeters. And we'll click on OK. Now we're ready to go into our user parameters. If we take a look at the top, we have our iMachining global settings. This will actually take care of the settings of iMachining for this entire project. So if I go into the settings, the following can be done. We can choose what machine we're working on by the drop down of list. We can choose what material we'd like to use from our drop down list of material and our default machining level. We also have the option of editing our database where you can add more machines and add more material as well. We're just going to use exactly what we have here now and we'll click on OK. Next, we'll go and take care of our cutting levels. In our cutting levels, I want to have my lower level set at the bottom over here, which is at a depth of minus 65 millimeters. And I'm going to use a clearance level of 10 millimeters with a safety distance of 2 millimeters. And we'll click on OK. Now let's take a quick look at our wizard data. You can see our machining level is at 6, which is what we had inside our global settings. And you can see that the step down is automatically broken down into six steps done equally. Now, you can also intervene if you want and use a user-defined number of steps or step down distance. I'm just going to leave it at the automatic step down. Now, in addition, we, as I mentioned before, we have our machining level. Note we have our revolution per minute automatically set over here according to the material type and the tool. And we also have our feed. Now this is also controlled by our iMachining levels. If I want to be more aggressive, I have a better holding on the part, I can always say go up to 8. When I go up to 8, you can see our spin rate and our feed rate changes as well, as does our maximum and minimum cutting angle. Let's just click on OK. Next, we'll go into our cutting parameters. In our cutting parameters, we have the following. We have how much of an offset do we want from our walls and islands and the floors as well. And we have one more option over here, which takes care of our rest rough. Our rest rough actually works as follows. And we'll see this a little later on in our simulation. We first do a major step down, our full step downs on the part, and then we step up to do a rest rough on the material itself. Now our rest rough, the step ups itself, can be controlled by two ways, either by a scallop or by a constant value for our 
step ups itself. We're just going to leave it at scallop. We'll click on OK. And now before I go to our next step, I just want you to note one more thing. We have here something here called holder collision protection. This will protect the part from our holder to make sure that our holder does not touch any part of our stock or part itself. What will actually happen is that our tool path will be modified so that it can go as deep as possible without having the holder in any way touch the stock. Let's first do this without our holder collision protection and then we'll see the difference between the two. We'll click on OK and now we're ready to generate our tool pass. Now that we've created our tool path, let's take a look at Verify. We'll click on Verify and we'll use the 3D dynamic to show our verification. We'll also put this at our top view. We'll start this one step at a time. You can see the actual tool and the material itself. As you can see, the tool is actually work, it's working its way into the part, but never exceeding the specified maximum cutting angle. As you see in this particular case, it started out doing a little bit of a tricordial cut over here and then continuing on to the other side over here as well. As you can see, it's continuing on and doing a little more of a tricordial cut as well. Now, what's actually going to happen now, it's going to do a channel around this area. This is called a separation channel, which actually separating this area over here so that it can start doing a spiral cut where it can. Now you see it's actually cutting away this material area over here. Continuing with that channel. Now it's doing that morphed spiral. It's going to be doing a morph spiral around this area. Making for the most efficient tool pass. Now let's speed this up just a little bit. And let's take a look exactly what's happening now. Again, it's continuing now with a spiral cut around this area. And now it's doing the step ups. Once it finishes the step ups, now it's going now to its next major step down. Now, as you see over here, you'll see that the holder is actually gouging into the part. Now let's stop this and now we're going to actually go back to our user parameters and change it to use the holder collision protection. We'll click on OK and then we'll regenerate our tool pass. Now let's go back and do our verify again. Let's pay attention to the holder as it gets to the stock itself. We'll go a little faster this time. And as you see, again, it's starting out working its way around the part, separating channels, then with the morphed spiral. Doing its step ups. And now it's starting to go down to its next step. Now, it still has enough room. So it's continuing working as it did before. Again, stepping up. Now it's going to go down to its next step. Now note what happens when it gets close to the areas where it can't go in anymore. It actually moves itself away, modifying its tool path so that the tool can go as deep as possible without gouging the material itself with the holder. And this will be done as we go all the way down on the part itself until we get to the very end. You'll also note that these step ups over here are further out than the way before, allowing the holder to get as close as possible to the part without gouging into the material. We'll click on OK and we'll accept the operation that we've done. 
Now I'm going to actually copy and paste this operation. So we have another operation now following the previous operation and I'm going to go and edit this operation. This time I'm going to change it to a different end mill. My next end mill, if we take a look, we have the, the tools actually sticking out a lot further from the holder with a total length of 75 millimeters. We'll click on OK to accept that tool. And now all we are going to do is generate a new tool pass. Now, as you can see from the tool pass itself already, that it's only working in areas where there was material that needed to be taken off. There are no extra air cuts being done on the outside, only working on the left over stock that has to be cut. Let's take a look again at verify. And what you'll see is that it'll only work on those extra step ins as shown over here. Clearing away this area, moving further in with this tool and only working where it needs to work.